Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com. And a lot of emails come in about people saying, well, how do I get out of auto? Or how do you know what to do in manual exposure? Where do you set your ISO? Where do you set your aperture? Where do you set your shutter speed? Well, it's pretty easy to figure out. I'm shooting with a Nikon D7000 with a 17 to 50 Sigma 2.8. And I'm gonna show you how to use auto to your advantage to then get into shooting manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a picture of this scene in full auto. So that means auto ISO, auto everything. The camera's gonna do all of the work. And then I'm gonna show you how to go and see what your file was taken at or what the image was taken at and then tweak it yourself to shoot manual. Because once you get into shooting photos manually, you're never gonna to wanna to go back to auto. Auto is gonna help you at the beginning to get a starting point. But once you get out of auto, the whole world opens up for you because you can make better decisions nine out of 10 times than what the camera can make. So let's look at this scene. Let's see what the camera's gonna do in full auto. I've turned it to the no flash. I don't want the flash to pop up. So I'm shooting this fully wide open. Uh, in terms of wide open, I'm talking about at, what is this, um, 17 millimeters. So there I take the picture. Now on the screen, you can see what the picture looks like. It looks, uh, you know, it's exposing for the whole scene. You can see that it's shot at 1 60th of a second, F4, 800 ISO at 17 millimeters. Personally, what would I do next? Well, now that we know where it says auto, it's going to say 800 ISO. Take your camera out of auto, put it in the manual, get your ISO set to where you want it. In this case, it's going to be 800 ISO. It said a 60th of a second at F4. So if you were to retake this picture in manual, it would look almost exactly the same as long as the lights didn't change as what it looked like when you shot it in full auto. Now that we have the camera set to manual at the same exact settings, what kind of changes can we make? Now you're not relying on the camera to make all the decisions. Now you can go from a 60th of a second and you can drop it lower. Let's see what happens when we drop it lower and we're just changing the shutter speed. Let's go to a 30th of a second. So now I'm locking my focus in, taking the picture. I went to, I went to a 20th of a second and this is what it looks like. So it's a little more, you know, I think it looks better. It's nice and sharp. It picked up something nice. Now my angle isn't very good. So I'm going to change my angle just to get Lil in a better area. So a 20th of a second at F4, 800 ISO. There's that shot. Now that's a slow shutter speed. You're going to start to run into possibly some motion blur, which I didn't hear. But I think that this exposure looks better already than what the camera made. The camera's taking a reading for everything and I'm tweaking it to where I think it looks better. So now we went to a 20th of a second, but like I said, you could get handshake. What can we do to let more light in and speed up our shutter? Well, we're at F4. Let's go to F2.8, that's one whole stop. So I can go from a 20th of a second up to, we'll say an 80th of a second, it's roughly one stop, and let's see what that's gonna look like. So I'm locking in on Lil, that's the beep for focus. Take the picture, and this is what we've got. I like the subtle color. Look at the, look at the shadow. This is very reminiscent of what the whole scene looks like as you see this picture on the screen. So I'm just gonna go back and look at the others. And being that we're shooting raw, we can do some extra tweaks. But now that I have a baseline setting of say 80th of a second at 2.8, 800 ISO, I can start shooting the scene and not worry about anything because the lights really aren't going to change. So now you can see that you went from using auto to shooting manually in, in a matter of minutes. You've taken the step to get out of auto to shoot manual and you used auto to teach you how to shoot manual. That's why you can sit here and tweak the camera, change the settings all you want and see what happens. That's the, that's the joy of shooting digital. You can learn really quick. So let's do some extra shots of Lil here and see what we come up with. Hey Lil. What you doing? I don't know, I'm 
I'm trying to do the puzzle and I can't get it. Ah, so these look a little dark. So now you can see on the screen that she looks a little dark because I zoomed in to 35. What can we do to add more light? Well, let's bump the ISO instead of dropping the shutter speed. I am going to go one full stop. I'm going to go to 1600 ISO, shoot everything at the same. Keep working, Lil. Go ahead. You can keep doing your puzzles. Wait a minute. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Uh, just keep doing your puzzles. You don't have to worry about me. So here we go. We just changed it to one whole stop, and that looks much better. Nice and sharp. This camera can handle 1600 ISO without a problem. So let's look at that one more time. So on the screen, you can see the difference between these two images. We went from shooting at 80th of a second, 2.8 at 800 ISO, to 80th of a second at 2.8 at 1600 ISO, and you can see the difference. It's not as dark, but again, I probably would be able to correct the RAW file if I really wanted to, but we're, we're in the game of getting it right as much as possible in the camera and using the RAW file to tweak it to make it even better. Keep in mind, you don't want to be too far off with your RAW file because that's when you start running into noise and grain issues. So I'm going to keep shooting here while Lil is doing her thing. It's kind of similar to how we photographed this once before, but I like this. I like, you know, I don't mind the 1600 ISO. It's nice and sharp, even with this lens, this Sigma. So I'm going to go, this is how I like to shoot. I go from wide, as you can see. I come in a little more, recompose, refocus, trying not to cut off the hands in her head. And I'm always, I'm not cropping. I don't like to crop after the fact. That's why I just took three images at three different types of uh, orientate, well, three types of compositions. Now let's shoot, we'll, we'll go one vertical. And I lock in and I shoot. Lock in and shoot. So, as you can see, the, the light is spilling over onto her face, but her face is, is nice and lit up, as you see from this image. So this is why you shoot manual, because you have full control over your image. What, what we just shot here in this five minutes that we've taken is, you know, what you guys can try at home, go from auto to manual and just start playing with the settings of your camera. When you change your shutter speed, what happens? When you change your ISO, what happens? And when you change your f-stop, what happens? Just start playing with it. Get a baseline reading of where your camera thinks you should be shooting and then tweak around from there. And over time, it becomes instinct. You start to walk into a situation and go, okay, I'm going to shoot this at 1600 ISO and my starting point is going to be, say, one hundredth of a second at 2.8. Take the picture, look at it, check your histogram if you read that, that's going out to Greg right there, or just look at the screen and say, okay, this is pretty close, what can I tweak to make it better? So. I hope that helps you out. You see the sample images. You can download the full res sample images that I just took with the D7000 and the 17 to 50 2.8 Sigma on the website froknowsphoto.com. Follow the link below if you're on YouTube or anywhere else, and you can get access to those files. So I hope that helps you out. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Thanks, Lil. You did a great job.